This is Betting Weekly Extra Time, European edition. You're with myself, Dan Roebuck, senior handicapper. Steve Wiss is alongside me, as are Daniele Fisichella and James Easton. Steve, another profitable week, three on the spin. Uh, settled side, proving its worth. Yeah. Good uh, morning to you, Dan, and James and Daniele as well. Hello. Hello. Uh, it was, uh, I have to say, big credit to, to Daniele. He's been going especially well on the two-unit play recently. And James with a brilliant bounce back last week in the uh, in his with his main show picks um actually he did the, he had a habit of doing that this last uh, year didn't you james a poor week and you, you bounced back with a really good one and uh yeah again it was late goals in la liga which frustrated me dan with mm. the madness with severe on uh, on monday mm. night but thankfully i didn't lose anything there and 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 now i am totally banned from um taking anything in a clermont game i think uh I said to you, if, if I ever put one up again, then just slap me on the face and uh, <laughs> say you've got to pick something else. So, um, but yeah, look, look, it's a settled lineup for the rest of the season, and um, we're all going to have a fair crack of the whip. Uh, Danielle, you keep uh, banging in these two unit plays. That is four on the spin. I make it when it comes to putting the big money down. You are the man. It would appear. Well, I do. I, I, I am at the moment, and I trusted in this case Genoa, Monza, and over, you know, sometimes uh, end of the season, and nothing to play for. But there is value there. There is value on the on the on the goals line, and I think that's where the interesting lies, really. But yeah, it, it, it was a successful one anyway. It was indeed. And James, as um, Steve was mentioning, uh, a sweep in terms of the regulation plays three from three, um, and your. Signing with Marseille uh, once again uh, helped swell the coffers. Yeah, it was a good week all around, wasn't it, for the show? And I think it is sometimes easier at the end of this season when you have not only a huge amount of form to look at with all teams because they've all got 20-odd games under their belts, but motivation is obviously a factor in these final two months of the season. And I think on some of the picks today, motivation will be a key factor as well. So we're going well at the moment. We are indeed. Usual mix. Two unit bets. So we've got some picks. We've got some hot dogs. Uh, we're going to kick off with the uh, strongest selections first. We've got some big match previews for you as well. We're going to look at the um, Barca Atleti game and also look at the uh, Inter Napoli game. Interesting for lots of different reasons. Plus, we've got a, a little bit of a section right at the end of the show where we're going to look at some uh, league and futures. Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, we're going to get some two unit plays first up from the boys. They've been absolutely brilliant over the course of of the last month or so, really, with these plays. Steve, you are first up Athletic Club against Alas Alaves. Athletic Club are minus 195, Alaves plus 575. The host looking to muscle in on the race for top four in La Liga. Only Real Madrid and Barcelona have taken more points over the course of the last dozen matches. Alaves struggling to score away from home. What's the angle in here? I am going with Athletic Club Bilbao, minus one on the Asian handicap, but minus 105, Dan. I think they can win this match and put some pressure on Atletico Madrid before they face Barca in the late game on Sunday. We're going to talk about that one later, aren't we? But uh, listen, I mean, Bilbao, are, like you said there, are well in the hunt for a top four spot. They've almost gone a bit under the radar this season. Not, not too many people are talking about them. They could win the Copa del Rey. In fact, you would expect them to. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be the favourites against Real Mallorca. Um, you know, we've talked about Will Bow a bit on the show this season. Unique club up there in the Basque country with a, you know, very unique sort of policy for you know the players that they sign. So um, there's a really strong togetherness there, but they've got some quality players. Let's address this one before anyone puts something in the comments. There is a suspension. For a Bill mm -hmm. Bow. Um, Aitor Paredes, uh, the centre back, is ruled out. Quite a big loss. He uh, has played 27 appearances this season, over 2,000 minutes, but uh, he didn't start versus uh, Girona recently, and they won that match 3 2. What I like about Bill Bow, Dan, they can win matches in different ways. They can win a shootout, say a 3 2 or 4 2 match, because they've got the offensive weapons, but equally, that if it does get a tight slugfest, they can nick one nils. So I think they've got a really strong home record as well. Uh, as you'd expect, the, the crowd really get behind them here. 10 wins out of 14 at home. Against an Alaves side, you, you rightly say, struggled for goals on the road, just 11 goals scored. They are a newly promoted team. They've done really well, Alaves. They're no mugs at all. I want to put that down on record. They're not a bad side, but Athletic Bilbao are a class above them. And we are getting to the stage of the season now. 
and uh, you know you'll be I think rec- recording the Premier League show later if you haven't already. And and um, the amount of times that will be mentioned teams on the beach from Nigel and Jack, you know we've got need an over and under a line for that, don't we? Um, Alaves could be <laughs> a side on the beach soon if not already. Um, they just look in a nice spot, well clear of the drop zone. Tough trip. I think Bill Bow win at least by one goal. So, you know, Asian handicap minus one, we get a push. And that's how it's been going for me in the Spanish games, hasn't it, recently? A last-minute goal against... What's the Alavaz 96-minute goal for a 2-1 win for Bill Bow or something now? Um, but, you know, look, as long as I don't lose the pick, I'm OK with it. But I think Bill Bow would certainly get the win. Uh, let's get Danielli's two-unit play. Danielli's been brilliant with the uh, the big money selections over the course of the last month. Juventus versus Genoa. We, we go here. This is a a Sunday uh, early kickoff in the states, seven thirty Eastern. Juve are minus two hundred. Genoa plus six fifty. Draw plus three hundred. Have I got this right, Danielli? Good week already for Juventus. Are they through to the Club World Cup finals in twenty twenty five? If so, how on earth does that work? Well, it's because the Napoli got knocked out by Barcelona. And so by ranking or by privilege, Juventus, without, not without polemics, because you know, why a team that's been excluded from UEFA competition going to the FIFA World Cup? Well, they are true, which means an awful lot of money for Juventus and easier to rebuild uh, the future. Indeed. Um, they aren't in great form at the moment. Just one win the last seven, but they are heavy minus money favourites here. What's the play in the game against Genoa? The play is over 2.25 goals at minus 104. Juventus' better performances but negative results lately. I think they deserve more than one point against Napoli and Atalanta because they push both sides and they attacked and they created chances. But you're right. After that 1-1 draw against Empoli, it looks like they lost a bit of confidence. They lost some of their certainties. They're making some defensive mistakes. Even the good players like Danilo do them. In the last seven games, they will be 15 in the league in Serie A. Only 20 goals scored at home. Frosinone have got more goals at home than Juventus. Sometimes the lack of quality, the lack of final play, it's affecting them. Well, for sure, the lack of European football has not benefited them at all. And this is a must-win game. Now, Juventus, where are they going to finish the season? If they average two points per game from now on for the remaining 10 games of the season, they will finish with 78, which is six more than last year. Is that an improvement, really, considering they haven't, they haven't played in the Champions League? Genoa, just one point more than them in the last seven games, eight points, respectable away form. They only got beaten by two goals or more once away on the road to nil against Atalanta. I like the courage they play against teams. Uh, They pushed Inter. They didn't deserve to lose to one recently. One one draws against Bologna and Napoli away from home, which I think is a good uh, result. Juventus no clean sheet in the last four home games, but Blaovic is back from suspension. Five goals in the last five home games for the Serbian. I like the over 2.25 goals and minus 104. Only two goals in the game, you lose half a stake. Yeah, Vlavic back is key, isn't it, for Juventus. That's Daniele's two-unit play. Let's get James's big bet of the weekend. This concerns me a little bit. This is 3.45 Sunday. It's the main game in France. It's Mert France. It's Montpellier against Paris Saint-Germain. Montpellier plus 4.20. PSG a minus 180 here with a draw at plus 360 here. Steve, I think, has a, a list of teams that are the least profitable on this show when they've been tipped up. And I think, am I right, Steve, are PSG towards the top of that list? They were. Uh, they're nowhere near <laughs> the levels of Real Sociedad. But, um, yeah, they've, they've not generally served us that well this year. However, uh, James is siding with them. And how, James? Yes, I am, Dan. So the pick is PSG minus one on the Asian handicap away at Montpellier this weekend, which is available at minus 110. I am going against the trend here. If you'd been backing PSG's opponents on the Asian handicap at around evens, whatever the the Asian handicap line was set at, at around evens, you'd have actually made a profit in eight of the last 10 matches because PSG have either A, not been winning games at all, or B, been winning them by small margins. So this is against the trend to support PSG on the Asian handicap. But the main reason I'm willing to do it, Dan, is actually because they haven't been winning games. PSG have drawn their last three matches now in League One. They drew at home to Rance and to Rennes, and they drew away to Monaco. I don't think this can continue. I don't think PSG will go four games without a win. I think they will win here. I think it's partly psychology. I think that, um, yes, they have a big cushion at the top of the table, 
But um, I think Luis Enrique, the manager, will stress that, you know, come on, guys, we, we need to win. It, it's a habit. We need to return to winning games. I also feel the fact this falls just before the international break is potentially a factor. They'll want to go away on a, on a high point rather than a low point. So not saying it will be a spectacular win or one of the three or four goal winning margins that we know PSG at their best can produce. But my feeling is that PSG here will just make sure they get the win because I don't see them going a fourth league game without victory. They were pretty good in midweek. They beat uh, Nice uh, 3-1 in the French Cup. Now, that is possibly motivation because we know they were keen to get into the final of that competition. They may rotate a little bit as well for this league game because they did name quite a strong lineup for that win over Nice in the French Cup. So it's not an absolute shoe in this. I can understand your concerns about it because PSG, as I say, they've not been playing particularly well. But I don't think Montpellier are the best defensive side in the division. They've looked pretty ropey to me at the back in some of their recent games. I think Montpellier are likely to have a go here at home. Um, they don't tend to completely shut up shop and be defensive. And so I think PSG will get chances here on the break as well. So all things considered, there's a slight risk to it. But as I say, my top line thinking on this game is I don't think PSG will go a fourth game without a win. If they get the win by one goal with our pick, then you're going to get your stakes back. And if they go on and win by two goals, then you're going to make a profit. And Montpellier, not great at home as well this season, it has to be said. That's Paris Saint-Germain uh, giving a goal away to Montpellier, minus 110. We're hoping for a sizable win, but a win would see a push. Hot dogs in profit for the season. A little bit unlucky, certainly with our uh, shot on target um, man, Mikantanza from James last week when he scored early. I thought surely we we're going to get over the line there, uh, but we didn't. James has got another shot on target for us. Um, bet shortly, but we're going to start in Spain with uh, Steve, 11.15 a.m. on Sunday. This is at Villarreal, Valencia. Steve, what you got for us for a big price? Over 3.25 Asian goals, Dan, at plus 190. I'm taking uh, a leaf out of the Daniele Fisica textbook here. He likes a, a good old over 3.25 on the hot Likes dogs, a quarter ball. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean, my hot dog's gone a bit cold in the last few weeks, so I really want to get this one back cooking on the grill. And sizzling away, Dan. Um, you know, it's uh, my actual mini hot dog gave a better account of itself last week than the the main one. It was awful uh, in the uh, Leon game. But um, you know, over three point two five Valencia traveling to Villarreal for a local derby. These two sides are only separated by about twenty five miles, I think. So there's always a bit of spice when they meet. There's often a lot of goals when these two sides meet down the years. Could be that the you know, the atmosphere is a bit more, you know, charged up. Um, both teams going at each other. And, you know, Villarreal, I've mentioned so many times about they're a great team for goals and overs. And they're going to be kind of mean my wagon team for, for over bets for the rest of the season. I was annoyed last week that I, I actually just forgot to get on them. They're over against Betis. Um, I was focusing on other games. So the Marseille game was on at the same time, I think. Um, so I completely forgot. Uh, they beat Betis 3-2 away from home. We don't, they're just playing one way. They only play one way Villarreal. And they're certainly going to be laying the attack down to a Valencia team who I actually won on this uh, match in the reverse fixture. You might remember it, Dan. It was one of my main picks. 3-1 uh, Valencia win that day. And Valencia are the sort of side, I've always said it, they get sucked into shootouts, but they can also get sucked into really drab games. Depends on the opposition. And the opposition are going to really open things up. So Valencia will enjoy themselves that way. They had a really entertaining tour draw against um, Real Madrid recently. There is a big injury um, and a sad one. Mukhtar Diakabi. Um, it could be a career ender, ender, couldn't it? This horrific knee injury that he picked up against uh, Real Madrid. So we wish him well there. But he's quite a big player. He's been the captain a few games this season at the back for Valencia. You do worry, don't you, when someone like that has a big injury impact it can have on the defence. So over 3.25 Asian goals at plus 190. If there's three goals exactly... We're going to lose half. I understand quite a few of you out there might just want to take over three and a half or for those on the lower line over two and a half. But uh, for the sake of the show, the hot dog is that 3.25 line. Yeah, goals we like Villarreal versus Valencia. That is Sunday, 11.15 a.m. 1 p.m. Sunday is Atalanta against Fiorentina. Daniel, you both involved in European action. Um, so maybe something to consider coming out of those games. Uh, but you are siding against Atalanta here, taking a bit of a flyer to a certain extent with Laviola. 
Atalanta going to be involved in a much tougher game tonight the day we're recording against Sport in Lisbon at home. I think it's a game where it could go extra time, penalties. It's a tough opposition, you know, top league, top of the league in Portugal. But Atalanta did well uh, against them uh, away from home. Winless in five games Atalanta, whereas Fiorentina play at home against Maccabi Haifa, a team that they already beaten in the Conference League. I think it's going to be a much softer game for them. Having said that, Fiorentina only uh, haven't won in five away uh, games. They only kept two clean sheets away from home at Udinese and Monza when both teams were not going through a particularly good spell. I think for Atalanta, it's a bit difficult to manage three competitions. They're also involved in Coppa Italia. They're doing well. Only one clean sheet in the last seven. And if you look at last year's table, they go one point less in the table compared to last year, where Fiorentina go plus three. But still, Atalanta are favorite. So you would imagine Fiorentina have improved a little bit more, but not quite close to beat Atalanta. On the other hand, Fiorentina have uh, done well against Roma. Uh, they dominated. They had a lot of chances. Missed the fifth penalty of the season already. The good news for Italiano is that Belotti is having a good impact with whoever he works, plays with him up front. Uh, Atalanta home are good. They only lost three games and one nil, and a nil-nil against Juve. It's a hot dog, and I like the Fiorentina draw no better. It's an handicap zero, 195. As I said, this is a long shot. It could be a draw here, which is probably the most likely result. In that case, you're not going to lose your stake. Yeah, just a little caveat there. Obviously, the draw, you get your money back, but Fiorentina, if they do nick it, plus 195, near 2 to 1. And the same price about our shot on target play uh, from James. 10 a.m. Sunday, Monaco versus Lorient. Who's the player that we're pinning our hopes on this week? So we're pending our hopes on Junior Krupi of Lorient in this game, Dan, uh, for Lorient away at Monaco. He's available at plus 195 to have a shot on target. Um, a little bit about Junior Krupi for the people that don't know him. He's only 17 years old, Junior Krupi, um, playing for Lorient in League One this season. He can play as a number 10 uh, behind the striker or he can play as the main striker as well. Junior Krupi's got a great scoring record for France at youth team level. He's played for the under-16s, under-17s and France under 18s. He's on 15 goals in 20 France uh, age group level internationals for those three age group sides. So he's a good goal scorer. The issue with Junior Krupi, Dan, is he might not start uh, for Lorient. Um, and that's important. He's not been starting many games. He's only started one game in 2024. Um, my feeling is they might pick him this weekend because Lorient were really, really poor at home to Lyon last weekend. They lost 2 0. They produced almost nothing in attack. So I sense it might be the right weekend to bring Junior Krupe back into the side. I'm re reliably informed by the powers that be at Bet Rivers that if he doesn't start the game and you've backed him in the uh, shot on target market, then the bet is void and you get your stakes back. So we're waiting to see if he's going to get picked. We don't know yet if Junior Krupe will get picked, but if he does get picked and if he does start the game, plus 195 is too big a price for me to have over 0.5 shots on target. Uh, as I said, he's a great goal scorer for France at age group level. He also doesn't need many minutes on the pitch to manage shots on goal, doesn't Junior Krupe? So I've looked through his stats for, for Lorient. He's actually managed three shots on target from his lost last five shots on goal. He does tend to work the goalkeeper. He doesn't miss many. He either scores... Or he forces a save from the goalkeeper. So he does have a good recent rate of shots on target per shot. Um, and he's managed those five shots on, on goal recently in just over 100 and 125 minutes on the pitch. So when he plays, if he plays, he does tend to be productive up front. It's just a case of will he get picked uh, that we're really waiting to find out. But my feeling is that they might make that change that weekend. We'll have this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. But if Junior Krupe does start, he's a dangerous, dangerous player. And as I say, he tends to work the goalkeeper or score when he does play. So I think plus 195 maybe reflects the fact he's not been starting games more than it actually, actually reflects his chances of having a shot on target. So he's my pick this weekend. You just need, as always, with the over 0.5 shots on target. It's just a shot on target. It's not about the goals. If he manages one, then you have a winner. That's our play when it comes to the shot on target market in France this weekend. We're going to stick with the same game. Monaco versus Lorient for Steve's second play here. Monaco short price favourites at minus 275. Lorient plus 650. Monaco were top in October, rediscovered their form a little bit. Lorient uh, have been good away from home recently. They were poor, as James pointed out, in their last 
home fixture, but on their travels have been picking up points. Steve, what do you like? Both teams score, yes, at minus 120. And um, you know, James rightly pointed out how poor they were last week. And they have been, for us on this show, a complete Jekyll and Hyde recently. They've let us down badly in both their last two home games. Uh, but they, we, you know, we had a really good cash uh, last time they played, played away from home against Wren. Um, you know, they we had a good cash on the show when uh, they beat Strasbourg as well. So uh, you know, it's one of those teams that seems better away from home right now. And I mean, last week I actually think Leon did a complete tactical job on them. Leon are a team I'm not going to get involved in much for the rest of the season. By the way, Dan, I think they're really well coached and can do loads of different things. But that this three four two one system of Lorient didn't work really against Leon. I wonder if they might change it up, like James says here, because I'm absolutely convinced. I've said it all season. This Monaco team, they can be got at defensively. Toulouse came here recently and showed that. I mean, they actually beat them two goals to one. Monaco haven't won at home since the 3rd of December, which they, they tend to travel better than than they are at home anyway. So, you know, Lorient, one clean sheet in 14 games. I think we can certainly expect Monaco to get on the score sheet. It's just whether we can get Lorient on the, on the board. But, I mean, you would suggest that they can. You know, they went to Rennes and put up a really good performance. Um, they're, I think they're better suited for the road. Counter attacks. They've got players like Bamber, Krupe. If he play, if he starts, he can come off the bench as well. They've got dangerous weapons. And Monaco, we just know sometimes. I think they're due a sleepwalking performance where they're just not focused. Um, they're a bit slack. They might fall behind, and they have to wake up and Ben Yedder rescues them or something. I could see it happening. Minus one twenty just looks too big for both teams to score. Yeah, you know, Monaco have, have kept two clean sheets in a row. I don't know how they kept one against PSG. And uh, Strasbourg were just dire. They were proper Eric, weren't they, against them last week, uh, Strasbourg. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, Lorient will be uh, a, a tougher test and might surprise them. So both teams score, yes. I mean, I think Monaco probably win the game, but I'm thinking 2-1 or 3-1. Both teams to score, yes, in the game. Monaco, uh, Lorient, that's the 10 a.m. Uh, Sunday Eastern kickoff. Incidentally, Daniele second place Saturday, 3.45. This is Frosinone. Against Lazio here, uh, Frosinone plus two thirty, Lazio uh, plus one one six to win, draw plus two fifty. We went unders with Frosinone last week, which cash we're going to go overs though uh, this week. Uh, Daniele against the Lazio side of been awful recently. They've lost the last four in all competitions, and then without Sarri, who resigned, gave up his uh, hefty contract, five millions. Decided four uh, four defeats in a row were uh, too much. Uh, left the team in disarray. The fractions between him and some of the big players and their environment were too big. And now, what's next for Lazio? At the moment, it's going to be Sarri, assistant Martuscello to take the team onto the pitch. But the, the names of Close, Rocky, Brocchi, all former players. But really, Lazio, one of the biggest underachievers in Serie A this season. Minus 15 points compared to last year. Only Napoli had done worse. Away from home, seven defeats, mostly to top sides but this is a side that's lost also to Lecce and Salernitana. Away goal difference, zero for Lazio last season, runner-up. They scored Lazio in all, their light, in all their last eight games on the road, and the hope for them is now that without European football, they will benefit. Last season, after they got knocked out from the Conference League by Azzel Alkmaar, Lazio won eight of the last 12. Is it going to be the same for them? But Frosinone are starting for the first time this season in the bottom three, the match they'd never been in a relegation position, only one win since the beginning of December and they, from then they are the team that collected the least points and conceded the most goals, but funnily enough, based on home form Frosinone will be saved 21 points, more than Genoa and Monza, goal difference zero, they score more goals at home than Juventus, is the away form is the leaky defence really, away from home, that is letting them down they've already conceded three at home to Roma, Napoli and Milan, but they beat Atalanta, drew 1-1 against uh, Fiorentina, only remain scoreless twice in the last eight games as Sassuolo they lost, losing a penalty I do like the over 2.5 goals, minus 121 probably above to score as well do you think Frosinone will stay up, Daniele? I mean, at the minute they're no. plus one thirty-five to be relegated. Do you think they'll go down? No, because I think I think they go down. I think they go down because uh, I can't see a team conceding more than six seventy-five, uh, seventy-eight goals staying up. 
and I cannot see Frosinone beating opposition 3-2 for 3 all the time. They not got, I don't think they ever won a game 1-0 this season, so no, I think they're they going to go down. That'd be a shame. Got some good players. I know a lot of them are on loan at the moment at the club. They've been good to watch. Hopefully, we'll see plenty of goals in the game uh, against Lazio this Saturday night locally, 3.45 Saturday Eastern. James's second play is my favourite play of the week. Ren against Marseille. Ren plus 148. Marseille plus 180. This uh, could be a big lesson for Pettis here, James. You've been ahead of the curve when it comes to Marseille, when you've been siding with them. You are fading them now. Is this because... The market has caught up with Marseille. Is it because of who they play? Talk us through this one. Yeah, it's a little bit of both of those things and more, actually, Dan. So, yeah, the Ren Marseille game is the pick here, is the pick, uh, the game we're looking at. The pick is Ren Tino Bet minus 124. So, the game ends in a draw. You get your you get your stakes back. And, and if Ren win, then you have a winning pick. It's both of those things you mentioned, actually. The market has reacted a little bit, I feel, to Marseille's admittedly brilliant form in recent weeks, and we've made we've had success backing them. My feeling, really, with this game, it's almost the opposite of my logic on the PSG bet earlier. With PSG, they haven't been winning games. Like, I don't think that can last. Marseille have been brilliant recently, but I don't think they're so brilliant a side that they can keep winning games, is, is what I think. They're on this fantastic run of victories as we're recording this under new manager Jean-Louis Gasset. They're, they're playing tonight against Villarreal away from home. They've been fantastic. They've been great value for a lot of their wins, played some really, really good football. But I don't think the, the foundations are there yet at Marseille to make it six wins or seven wins or eight wins. At some point, I think the winning run will stop. And I think this is a really tough game for them because Rennes are a good side. So it's difficult for me to see Marseille winning uh, this weekend. I think fatigue is also a factor here, Dan. This is going to be Marseille's ninth game in just 32 days. That's an average of a game every three and a half days. I mentioned on the show last week, they have become more of a, a squad effort recently, have Marseille matches because players off the bench have been useful. So that should help them here. But at some point, I think just the fatigue of playing in different competitions will catch up with them. And yeah, as I say, it's hard for me to see them going here and, and winning because Ren are a really, really good side. Um, they've also had a lot of games recently as well. They, they've they actually played eight in the last 32 uh, days, as, as this game will be the, the eighth of those. Um, but they've had a week to prepare for this, which Marseille haven't. They haven't had a midweek game. Um, I thought they played quite well last weekend. Uh, Ren away to, to Lille. They let a 2-0 lead slip, which will have frustrated them. But generally in that match, they were really good. And I think at home here to Marseille, after a week of preparing for the match, whereas Marseille have been playing in midweek, Ren should have enough here to avoid defeat. And as I say, as long as they avoid defeat, you're not going to lose your stakes here. So I'm fairly confident about this. I think that Ren should do enough to get at least a point and they could well win this game against the Marseille side who I do think will be tired. So the pick is Ren Tino bet and that's available at minus 124. Got a couple of big match previews for you next. No official plays, but some big games in Europe that we want to cover off. Uh, mid late afternoon in the US on Sunday, 4 p.m. and 3.45 p.m. Eastern kickoffs. In La Liga, two teams buoyed by really good Champions League results go head to head and in Italy it is the reverse so interesting juxtaposition here how do betters react just on that question before we get just some brief thoughts on on both the games Steve I mean Atletico Madrid uh, Atletico Madrid versus Barcelona and Inter versus Napoli do, do you leave them all alone because of what's happened in midweek because some teams will be really down and others will be through the roof what would be your just general strategy yeah, my general strategy is probably to avoid games uh, like this because you just don't always know what the reactions are going to be from the players. Um, everyone's going to have different theories, you know. I mean, both are going to be pretty much on a high, aren't they? Which is a positive. But is there going to be a come down now? There's often there's a come down, isn't there, after a high? So I, I tell you, there's two things that stand out to me here. Number one is Barcelona are a, a clear underdog. I mean, it's not often that Barcelona are an underdog in any La Liga game, right? So that immediately stood out to me. Whether or not they, they deliver a result, that's debatable, but it just it stood out. And the goal line again, I think we talked about this game in the reverse fixture. I'm sure we did. I, I think Will White might have even had a pick in it. And I think it was unders and it cashed. And there's a really big under trend when these two teams meet. 11 of the last 14 go under two and a half. 
Not that I'm a head to head to man, head to head man, but because of the high profile nature of this fixture, I think it does have more significance than normal. And if there is a come down from both teams, they might lack energy. They might not be quite as sharp as they'd want to be. A bit sluggish, a bit slow. Maybe the game might get pedestrian in, in places. Stop start with free kicks. The goal line of under two point seven five. Uh, odds against, you know, plus money here we can get on this, would be my lean for the game. Um, but if we look at the table, especially for Barcelona, they might consider it must win, which could open it up. So it's a tricky, tricky encounter, Dan. Interesting. Atleti against Barcelona. Atleti are plus 130, Barcelona plus 190, overs and unders here. If you want to go under, plus 130, Barcelona won the reverse fixture. Uh, one nil. Last three meetings have been one nil. Bar so that's eleven to one. Uh, uh, James, any sort of strategies when it comes to to games like this? I mean, Atleti last night. You, you could, you know, there's pictures of Diego Simeone falling to the ground every sort of five minutes during during the game itself, and and late on in that game against uh, Inter. I mean, emotionally, it must have been draining, and they've got to get up again, have they, for Barcelona? Who I, I don't want to say it's a bit more straightforward for them. They're having a, an odd season themselves, and they eventually got the better of Napoli in their game. Yeah, I think some teams, Dan, are just such high-performing sides. They can immediately go again after after a, a dramatic win of the sort that Atletico Madrid have had in midweek, and, and others can't. So it's a big ask, I think, personally, for Atletico Madrid to go again this week. And they're obviously a top team, but it would have taken a huge amount out of them uh, with what happened against Inter in midweek, both physically and also psychologically. I'm with Steve on this. I was surprised to see that Barcelona are such big underdogs here. Um, if I was to bet on the game, I'd probably go with Barcelona on the Asian handicap. Um Plus 0.25 on the Asian handicap, I think, is minus 125. I'd be pretty tempted by that just because, as you say, their preparation has been a little bit more straightforward. So, yeah, I think it, you have to read it on a team-by-team -team basis, really, the impact. One other thing, thing my friend uh, Jules Kunde, who we made money on in the yellow card market last time we covered them, I did notice he's still available at a big price uh, to have a yellow card. He's plus 510 here. When we backed him the other week, um, he was plus 550. Um, I'd be tempted by that because that when we backed him, that was his first yellow card of the season. The, the historic stats would say mm. he's probably due another two cards this season. So plus 510 for Kunde to get a booking um, would be would be my lean on this. I think by the time the show goes out, he'll probably be named in the France squad for the March Internationals, which uh, I'm not too happy about. But I think, yeah, he could well get a booking again. So that would be my lean. But just generally on the market with Steve, I think Barcelona here, it looked to me, a little bit too big. Uh, Atleti are minus 400 to finish in the top four. Incidentally, Athletic Club are plus 185. We talked about Athletic Club uh, earlier on in the show. Atleti plus 1800 to win the Champions League. Barcelona plus 1600. That is before the draw is made. This show might probably go out, probably will go out after the draw is made. Want to cover off Inter against Napoli with Daniele here. Inter minus 165 to beat Napoli plus 425. The draw plus 320. What, what's been the reaction in Italy, Daniele, with, with Inter's exit in the Champions League? Because Big. a goal to a goal to the good and 2 0 up on aggregate, you think Inter should get home from there on in. What's the reaction? Well, big disappointment because Inter was considered the jewel in the crown of Italian football, the team that has been dominating Serie A. And everyone would have thought they would have progressed against a beatable Atletico Madrid. But that's the law of the Metropolitano. You know, the Metropolitano Atletico Madrid they only lost once since mid-January last year and they average over 2.6 goals per game. Inter paid a high price for a couple of defensive mistakes, but also for not converting the chances in the first leg with Arnaudovic and in the second leg with Turam. I think some players perhaps were a little bit off. Inter lacked a little bit of sharpness, but, you know, Champions League football was never the goal, the objective for Simone Inzaghi men, they'll go again next season with a much improved squad after of course they have won the Scudetto which probably is going to happen in the next couple of or fortnights Yeah, What about Napoli? I mean, I think more people expected them to go out of the competition away at Barcelona but it was relatively tight in terms of the, the score, I mean what, what have they got to look forward to between now and the end of the season? They are uh, 10 to 1 to finish in the top four. They're seven points off top four. Italy could get that fifth place. I know there's no market for that, but that's incentive potentially to get back into the Champions League. 
is to try to recover part of the style of play they had last season. It was only the first defeat for Napoli under uh, Calzona, who think reverted to the basics, really, 43 quick passages, and try to recover a bit of confidence also in the technical leaders of the team, Kvarashelia and Osimhen. But I think last year, Napoli would probably have beaten Barcelona over the two legs. Such a soft approach at, at the Montjuic, and, you know, they considered two goals in the first 15 minutes. They look very open. And then after that, it was a good game, after all, but you could feel Napoli's frailties. I mean, they only kept five away clean sheets so far, Napoli. is because they don't keep the ball very well and they suffer swamp at a swamp of attack. Going into the game on Sunday, very, very difficult to pick a bet. But I'll give you stats. Inter, with the point tally they got now, 75, last season, they would have already won the title now because Lazio finished with 74. So they've done much better than Napoli. Now, are they going to go and get 100, 105 points, or are they going to revert to the mean a little bit? I mean, 85, 86 points might be enough, really, for Inter. But, you know, I think uh, considering how well they've done at home, they always score in the first half, but in one home game, they kept nine home clean sheet in Serie A. I think it's probably going to be an under 2.75 goals, really. That's what, where, where, the, where the value is for me. Probably an under 2.5 goals. Can't expect fireworks, really. Just a lean from Daniele in that one. We think it could go unders. Uh, those are the big games across uh, Europe on Sunday. We've got some Asian line bets for you to finish off the picks. We've got two uh, draw no bet, Asian line zero. Plus, we've got a an Asian goal line as well to take a look at. Let's rattle through these, shall we? Steve, you go to Germany, 10.30 Saturday, Hoffenheim, Stuttgart. Over 3.25 goals, Dan. Minus uh, 103 is the price here. Th this was really close to being my two-unit play. I'm massively confident about this. In fact, the more I look at it, I probably should have had it as the double-unit play. It looks a banker for goals. Um, Hoffenheim, we've said all season are a magnet for both teams scoring, for high-scoring matches. Stuttgart, exactly the same. Uh, I actually won on this game in the reverse fixture with a hot dog with Hoffenheim claiming a, uh, I think it was a 3-2 win on the road. It was uh, a crazy game. They didn't deserve it because Stuttgart battered them, but uh, they didn't have Garassi that game, I don't think, Stuttgart, which was one of the reasons I went against him. But Garassi's back now and he's been scoring goals for fun. Um, I mean, there's injuries defensively for both sides. Uh, suspension, sorry. John Anthony Brooks is suspended. Ozan Kazbak suspended for Hoffenheim. Anthony Ruout likely injured as well for them. Uh, Dan Axel Zagadu's done for the season, done his ACL injury, former PSG man. So they've got Hoffenheim, I swear down, for the last 10 years. Every time I look at their squad, there's loads of injuries, Dan. I don't know what goes on there, but... <laughs> um, yeah, Stuttgart, I think Stuttgart win this game. And in fact, you could look at like team totals for Stuttgart, things like that. There's just slightly odds on to win. But over 3.25 goals makes a lot of sense. Both teams should contribute. This should be a wild game. I just This actually really excites me, thinking about this game. It's going to be a great watch and um, you know, it could end something crazy. So, I mean, I thought the goal line would be minimum 3.5. So, to get 3.25 goal line at uh, minus 103, I think, makes a, a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, we go to the Asian line. Uh, for Daniele's play, Udinese against Torino. This is 10 a.m. on Saturday. And uh, you're starting with Torino here, Daniele. Yeah, Torino is an handicap of minus 105, but we found out that Udinese are the new Sassuolo because they only beat top sides, Milan, Bologna, Juventus and Lazio this season. And they won at Roma. Uh, the first time they didn't win 2-0. Only one defeat in the last six for Udinese, by the way. But they are the kings of draws at home. Drew nine games, whereas Torino only one win in the last seven. Good reaction against Napoli. I think they deserve to lose. In, in no man's land, really, with 38 points. Probably they're going to finish with the same point tally as last season, 53. That's if they average 1.5 points per game. But probably it's going to be the end of the road for the manager, Juric. Really, the team hasn't improved, although they've strengthened in uh, the summer. Three away wins for the Granada this season. A Salernitana, Lecce and Cagliari. Maybe they get a little bit of joy in Friuli. Asian handicap, zero, minus 105. And similar bet for... James's last play of the show, 10 a.m. Sunday, this one, Clement Le Havre, who you're siding with here. 
Yeah, Claremont Le Havre. I'm siding with Le Havre here, Dan, on the Asian Handicap. Zero goal start at plus 110. This is a relegation battle. Both of these teams are in danger of going down in France. It's one of those games where I think the prices are the wrong way round. Claremont are favourites here, plus 148 to win. Le Havre plus 190. I make Le Havre slight favourites here. Um, I think sometimes in a relegation battle, the teams that survive are those that can embrace the challenge and thrive on it rather than suffer from it. And I see La Havre potentially as being one of those sides. I really like the way they regathered ahead of their game against Toulouse last weekend. They've, they've branded it 10 finals to avoid relegation. They had 10 games before that match last weekend. They won. They deservedly beat Toulouse last weekend. So I think La Havre are in the right frame of mind to, to fight against relegation. And I think the opposite applies to Claremont. They're really struggling. They lost to Mets in another big relegation battle last weekend. Claremont have won only one of their last 16 games against League One opposition. That's how poor they are. So what are their chances of winning this weekend? I think they're pretty small. That's why I was happy to take Le Havre here. With our pick, a zero on the Asian handicap, of course, you get your stakes back. If it ends in a draw, you'll make a profit if Le Havre win the match. Yeah, always a shrewd player. Love the Asian handicap, zero. Plus 110 if you're siding with Le Havre at uh, Claremont. And to finish off the show, we've got a France Futures special um Liga top four top six and relegation all covered here Steve you've got to one or two thoughts on these markets just to rattle through some of the prices for our viewers and listeners when it comes to top four Brest minus 225 Monaco minus 670 I guess the interesting ones are Lille and Lens at minus 125 and minus 112 or perhaps Marseille and Nice both at 350 or plus 350 and then top six we've got Ren and Rans that we can throw in there plus 220 and plus 600 with Marseille and Nice minus money. Um, in terms of uh, those two markets, Steve, anything catch your eye? Yeah, well, we might do this in the next few shows now. Have a look at each league and the outrights because um, it, I always quite like taking some futures with about 10 games to go. You've not got your money tied up for that much longer. I know some don't like having their money tied up for the whole season, for example, but... Um, I'm tempted by something in all three of these markets. I'm, it's not an official pick, but I'm certainly monitoring some of these. I think Lille are a massive price at minus 125 to finish in the top four. I think they're an absolute banker, to be honest with you. The the Steve calculator came out on these fixtures, and I've got Lille picking up another 23 points. I've got Monaco and Lons picking up 19, and I've got Brest only picking up 14. So I'm massively anti-breast in this market. I think they're they're going to drop down the table. Um, I think they'll just hang on to the top six spot, but uh, I wouldn't bank on it. And um, <clears throat> I think Lille will finish second. And I did look at them actually in the market without PSG. But the only the one caveat is that Lille might go deep in the Conference League, which put me off slightly. But I think Lille minus 125 is still massive for the top four and for the top six. How are Ren at plus 220 to finish in no the idea. top six? Because Nice are falling like a train. I think they come out of the top six. They just don't look like getting anything right now. Um, and then basically you're in a battle, Ren versus perhaps Marseille for sixth spot. Um, Marseille might go deep in the Europa League, which is a, a, and the fixtures for Marseille are quite tough now. They haven't actually beaten an awful lot recently, as James pointed out. Um, so I thought that was a huge price on Ren. Actually, Rams are not... Can't rule them out at plus 600 in fairness, but um, that looked big. And then in the relegation battle, if... I mean, I've looked at these fixtures here and, and they, they, all of them have got some tough matches. Hopefully, this is direct, this is direct relegation direct, as well, isn't yeah, Steve? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully Clermont go because then I can actually... I mean, I can't bet on their games now, can I? So I want rid of them. But they, <laughs> they, they're going to be going down. Mets have won the last two games, which has been a, a little bit of a perhaps surprise. So if they could get out of trouble, I'm not saying they will, someone else could fall into that bottom too. And the team that I am really concerned about is, is Strasbourg because they just don't look like they've got goals in them anymore. They're on a really bad run of form. Their, their, their easier fixtures don't come until the last three or four. So a lot can happen until then. Plus 600 is a price that I'm looking at. But there's a huge game this weekend we haven't talked about. Nantes against Strasbourg. And the result of that could be crucial. I, I I worry for Nantes as well, and hopefully for this point of this show, they 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 they're in trouble because James has them as an outright. But 
Look, th those are the ones I'm monitoring. There's a big game at the top as well, Brest against Lille, by the way. Now, I actually think Lille win the game, but they could equally drop points there. So I'm monitoring the situation, Dan, and I may well strike in some future shows with some outrights. OK, we'll take a look at a few of those over the course of the uh, remainder of the season. James, very quickly, anything from a France point of view, top four, top six relegation? Yeah, so as Steve says, I'm on not to be relegated from uh, before the season began. They were plus 600, then they're plus 300 now. I looked through those three markets that we've covered there, the top four, the top six relegation. The one pick for me would be Ren plus 220 to finish top six. I completely agree with Steve. That is way too big. That was the only one I would bet on on today before the weekend games. Ren at 220 to finish top six is a great opportunity. Yeah, keep your eye on that one. We'll cover off uh, Italy, Spain, Germany between now and the end of the season. Steve rightly points out, sometimes start the campaign. Do you want your money tied up for nine, ten, ten months? Probably not. But with a couple of months to go, it might be a bit more palatable for punters. Uh, Steve, Daniele, James, thanks for your company. Good luck to one and all. We'll keep everyone updated as you always do over the course of this weekend. That is a wrap for Betting Weekly Extra Time European Show. The boys are taking a well-earned week off for the international break. There's plenty more content across the network though you can follow us at because we win and subscribe to our youtube channel as well from all of us for now though it is goodbye